Welcome everyone. My name is Kelly Rixine. I work with the state of North Dakota and I'm an IT specialist with Edutech, uh, which is an educational service division within North Dakota in uh, informational technology. NDID, NDIT is doing whatever possible to ensure the entities we support are uh, able to function in a wide variety of situations. For K-12 schools, we know our North Dakota educators and administrative personnel are carefully navigating how to proceed with classes, communication, and collaboration while addressing concerns over COVID-19. Edutech's mission remains to provide educational services and leadership to improve teaching and learning in North Dakota PK through 12. We are continuing that mission by providing these webinar series that are here to support all in North Dakota K-12 community with support, training, and resources. For more information about past and future websites uh, or uh, webinars, please check our website and YouTube channel. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about digital hygiene and the ways that you can protect yourself uh, online and keep organized online because we always have <laughs> trouble uh, doing that seems like too. So um, I'm going to first start off with uh, social engineer, and I'm going to define social engineering um, as the act of manipulating people into performing actions or uh, revealing com uh, confidential information. So this term typically applies to trickery or deception for the purpose of information gathering, fraud, or computer system access. And in most cases, the, attack the attacker never comes face to face with their victim. So uh, what social engineering is basically giving, it's not uh, more like holding you uh, hostage or at gunpoint or uh, pickpocketing or anything like that. It's more like setting up a little trap uh, for you to actually click on or do something with that gives um, um, hackers or uh, uh, fishers um, the ability to access your information uh, when they want it. So here are some techniques used by social engineers. Uh, phishing is the, the first one you think of and often the most common, uh, but it's a method of trying to gather personal information using deceptive emails and websites. Uh, phishing attacks try to get you to hand over sensitive information like usernames and passwords. So um, it's think of phishing uh, in a lake. Uh, this is phishing with pH, but um, they are uh, throwing a line out there, throwing a hook out there and hoping you click on something or hoping uh, you open up their website to have uh, to, to give you uh, um, access or give you give them access to your information. Uh, one of the ways they do that is email and spam. So this is the the most, like I said, the most common uh, phishing technique is through email and spam. Uh, but this is usually the same email sent to millions of users or a large amount of users uh, that request to fill in personal details. So it'll ask you to fill out a form or provide some um, type of information that you shouldn't really need to give. Um, but these details will be used for fishers for their illegal activities. Uh, most of the information or the messages uh, will say, hey, this is urgent, or we require you to put in your um, birth date or your password or something like that to verify this in, uh, information or verify these accounts. So uh, usually it's through email or a spam email like that, uh, a fishers will phishing email. So an example of a phishing email uh, looks something like this. Um, right away, when you get something like this, you'll notice that, hey, it looks like it's coming from Facebook. It's It's got uh, Facebook uh, technical support. It says you. Uh, it looks like it says go to Facebook. It has that blue color like Facebook has. Uh, but you'll notice um, up in the top where it's the, the sender, um, it says Facebook technical support. But when you look at the email, it's clearly not coming from Facebook. Um, it's, you know, I don't even know what all those numbers are, and it's got an online home server dot info. It's not coming from Facebook at all. Uh, and then another great way to um, look and, and make sure that you're clicking on something that's um, right or um, accurate, you need to hover over. So it says go to Facebook, that little button there. Um, but when you hover over that uh, in the bottom left hand or bottom right hand, depending on your computer, your computer setup, uh, you can hover over that without clicking on it, and it'll give you the web address that it's going to go to. So you can see that it's not going to Facebook. It's going to some other um, crazy uh, URL that's uh, potentially a phishing email uh, that they want you to click on. 
And then you'll notice that it says, you know, um, Facebook techno, uh, um, technical support and is sent to you. Um, sometimes these automative messages uh, can be um, disguised as this way and they can be correct. Um, but again, a way to look at that is to make sure that you know who it's coming from and then the links are, are good by just hovering over them. So they, sometimes those automated messages can look like phishing emails, um, but go ahead and check them as you see. Another one is ransomware, and ransom, what ransomware is is it just denies you access to your devices and files and, until a ransom has been paid. So you click on something with an email, and then uh, ransomware through your PC um, installs malware, and then the user gets tricked into clicking on a link and opening up an attachment, and then after that it says, hey, I can't open, open this stuff anymore or, or do anything with my files. Uh, until I, you know, pay this ransom uh, fee of $500 or whatever it is. So uh, that's a little bit about what ransomware is and how you can um, make sure not to click on any of those. Link manipulation is another uh, easy one that um, um, social engineers use. And this is simply, uh, you'll, you'll get an email saying, hey, uh, we need you to create your pass or we need to recreate your password or verify your account or something like that and you'll get to the site and it'll look exactly how you it'll say your name it'll say your username uh, but it'll say also enter your password um, another nice uh, easy way to check this is to go up to the url bar and obviously you can see this is not google reset password uh, this is not a secure site this is not from google right now um, so make sure that when you click on links or if you um, it's going to send you somewhere it doesn't redirect you to somewhere um, that you're really not supposed to be because it'll they will look uh, very um, uh, exact. Uh, they they will look somewhat almost exact to what you really see, um, but it, it won't be the exact uh, spot where you're supposed to be. Another one is Trojan Horse. This is a type of malware designed to mislead users with an action that looks legitimate but actually allows unauthorized users to uh, the user account to collect uh, credentials through a local machine. And this requires information, then transfers, uh, transmits that uh, information to cyber criminals. So um, simply they want you to click on something, they want you to download something or access something, and once you do that, um, they'll have access to your machine. Another type of uh, device is a, a pineapple, so a evil twin Wi-Fi. So hackers will use a device called a pineapple. It's a tool that's used by um, that used to contain two radios that set up their own Wi-Fi network. So a lot of times when you go into Target or Starbucks or any type of public place, they'll, you, you'll usually see you know Starbucks Wi-Fi or um, AT&T Wi-Fi or something like that. That's pretty general. Um, but make sure that you're paying attention to uh, what what uh, um, network is controlled by. So a lot of times you'll either need a password and sometimes you might not need a password, uh, but make sure um, that you're connecting to the uh, public Wi-Fi that you're supposed to be connecting to instead of somebody that set up their own and then they are, you're just driving that traffic through theirs. Um, a lot of times I tell people not to, you know, access their banking information, uh, banking information or uh, other sensitive data, uh, things like that on a public Wi-Fi. You know, use your use your phone data or use um, a, a secure network that if you're going to be checking sensitive data, uh, things like that, um, I, I don't check your bank account at at Starbucks kind of thing. So. And Lastly, I guess uh, once you click, you can't go back. Um, once you see an email and, and you, you click that attachment uh, and it opens up and it goes nowhere and you think, well, that must just, they must have put in something wrong or, or did something wrong. But uh, realistically, it's, um, it, the damage has been done now. Uh, so you've either given the information or if you've clicked on something that um, uh, is a, a phishing email that now uh, social engineers would have uh, uh, access to your account or, or passwords or usernames. So uh, next is passwords. So let's talk a little bit about passwords. And passwords are kind of like underwear. <laughs> uh, change them often, keep them private, and never share them with anyone. 
seems like uh, solid advice. Um, but a couple of things that you should know about creating strong passwords. Uh, you should use 12 characters at minimum. Uh, there's no really, really minimum length of, of uh, passwords that generally says, oh, this is the best. Um, but typically you should say uh, between 12 and 14 characters in length. A longer password is always better, I guess. Uh, the same password for all accounts. So don't use the same password for multiple um, to remember, uh, but uh, try to um, use different types of uh, e um, passwords for uh, different types of accounts. And remembering those can be hard, but um, we're going to talk about a password manager that I'll recommend that makes that a lot, a lot easier. Next is dictionary words or combination of dictionary words. Don't use house, don't use, you know, building, don't use those simple words for a password. Uh, same thing, uh, just if you add in another uh, word like red house is also very bad, um, things like that. So don't use common words uh, that are. And then even if you use house, uh, don't by by replacing a zero with an O doesn't make it any more secure. So um, those obviously those obvious situations are substitutions of zeros and I's and ones and those kind of things. If you have a longer password, that's good, but uh, if you just have a, a simple password like house and you change the O uh, to a zero, um, it doesn't make any any more secure. So creating strong passwords, including numbers, symbols, capital letters, and lowercase letters, that's usually a mix of all those. Um, however, they are harder to remember. And most of the time when we're creating um, some of these accounts or we create a new account, it'll say enter your password or create a password and it'll say do all this. Um, so, but they're, they're good, they're secure, but they're hard to remember. So how can we, so what are some tips that we can get uh, by with creating uh, strong, uh, secure passwords, but we can also remember. Uh, one of them is padding. I've learned this a while ago, but you pad your passwords. Put in something like an and symbol um, and a six or a number, whatever. So right here I have and symbol and six, and then I have my password, and then I put six and the and symbol again. So it's just, I have my password in there, but I pad it with two um, characters on each side kind of thing. So that's just an easier way to um, remember your password. Um, and then you just remember two of those uh, symbols that will uh, at the beginning and at the end. Another one is passphrase. So you can, um, this makes it really secure too. So uh, I know this doesn't have any symbols or uppercase letters or numbers, but you can add those in as, as, you, as you wish. But this is just a simple passphrase of uh, using four um, normal, uh, uh, kind of random words, so correct, horse, battery, stable. Um, that's That could be your passphrase or your password um, that is quite secure uh, because there are four random words and there's, uh, you know, a multiple of, of characters there. Next would be a sentence. So um, type in your password as a sen sentence. So like uh, I put in here, today I went to the hardware store for nails, period. So it's got an uppercase, a lowercase, a, um, you know, a, a, a character, a period, a um, number one, all those kind of things. And you can remember that quite easy. And it really has not, maybe you don't even go to the hardware store, make up something that you don't even do. Um, but this is a way that you can get a bunch of characters in and make strong passwords. And uh, uh, they're pretty easy to remember. Another um, thing with passwords is multi-factor authentication or um, two-factor authentication. So you have um, signing in this way will give you access or a different way to um, um, sign into your account. Basically, you'll need your password, so you create a strong password, but then you'll also be asked for something else. So when I sign I sign in with my password, but then it'll also ask me for a code that's either sent to my phone via text or a voicemail or a mobile app. So in that code will change um, ever so often. So even if somebody had my password or um, had the ability to get into my password or my account, they would need this um, exact um, uh, six digit uh, number to get into my uh, account. So it's just another layer of 
of uh, security that you would have um, for uh, your passwords. So ways that you can use multi-factor authentication. Um, obviously, you'll something that you know, so your password. Um, sometimes it might ask you for a PIN or connect the dots. Sometimes on your phone, um, it'll say connect these dots in the right order, those kind of things. Um, you can use USB tokens, something that you have. So something that you know is your password, something that you have uh, is USB token. So maybe it's a, it's kind of like a key for your computer. When I plug this in, it's going to allow me to um, access uh, uh, my, my files and my documents and my accounts. Um, you can also use little uh, digits, you know, that might have a USB that changes that six digits, uh, you know, every so often, um, and you can use those too. And then there's something you are, so uh, it's biometrics, like fingerprints and face ID, things like that that you use on your phone or even on your computer, use your fingerprint to, um, um, to get into your computer. So these are uh, ways that you can um, use multi-factor authentication uh, with your passwords that you're already, you're already strong passwords already. Um, but sometimes it's hard to remember or create a bunch of those passwords. Um, and then uh, 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 getting into multiple accounts because we all have tons of accounts. So um, I'm going to show you a, a password manager that you can use. And then um, with multi-factor authentication, there's also um, um, a couple apps that are, are really good. Uh, Microsoft Authenticator has is one. Uh, all you have to do is put it on your phone, and once you log in uh, to your Office 365, um, you'll put in your password, but then your phone will ring, and it'll say, enter this six-digit. And then you enter it in, then you're in your, your uh, Office 365 account. Um, Google Authenticator has one. Um, and then the next one is LastPass, which I'm going to talk about my uh, password manager. But uh, all three of those are, are really good that I've used in the past. Uh, going forward, so pass, uh, LastPass I've been using for the last five years. Um, uh, the state of North Dakota, uh, NDIT has approved, to put this on their approved list uh, for us to use uh, for usernames and passwords and secure notes and things like that. But I've really dive, dove into uh, LastPass um, the last couple of years, and it's one password to access all of your passwords. So I have one password uh, that I remember. And that one password gets me into all of my passwords. So um, I save it once. Uh, if I create, say, I, there's Verizon at the top. Say I create a new Verizon account. Um, it LastPass will say, hey, I see you got a new account. Do you want me to save this in your LastPass? Absolutely. I save it. It's automatically saved on my, um, uh, my mobile device, on my uh, computer, in, in a browser. And then I can actually even get it on my Apple Watch, too. So. Uh, if I am uh, logging into that Verizon account uh, it, and I might not know my password, um, I can go in, type it in, look it up on my LastPass, type in the LastPass password that I know, look up my password from Verizon, and then uh, enter that uh, information in there. And then also you can um, create strong passwords from here. So here you have... Um, something that looks like this. When when I go into LastPass, I can create strong passwords. And you can see that there's um, password length. So now I can have 68 uh, uh, characters here. I can say, is it easier to say? I can switch the length again. Um, is easy to say or easy to read or all characters, those kind of things. And then most will say, hey, do you need a number, a lowercase or a symbol, that kind of thing. So I can uh, switch the length and it just gives me a random set of numbers, things that I would never ever be able to remember. Um, and then I can go and copy that and fill that in. So I've used this um, all the time. I rarely know any of my passwords anymore. I, I can't remember them. I know them. I can't remember them. So I have something like this as a password for my Verizon account. Well, when I go into sign in for my Verizon account, um, uh, LastPass will recognize it. If I'm logged into LastPass, it will recognize it and just automatically fill it in for me, uh, which is really nice. So uh, as long as I'm securely signed into my LastPass account on my phone and my computer, it'll automatically um, uh, fill in that, uh, that, that device there. So those, that's a password manager that I would recommend and, and just check out. It's free. 
uh, you're you're welcome to just check out and, and see if it works for you. So another one is email. So this was this would be more of on the organization piece. Is there's two types of people in this world. There's a zero inbox uh, like I am, and there's people that have thirty two thousand pe uh, uh, pieces of uh, information and uh, emails in your inbox. So. Um, some tips that I use, um, I organize my inbox by unsubscribing to junk emails uh, or I get things week after week. So a lot of times I'll get this uh, email from Dick Sporting Goods every week. I get it on Monday morning and I'll delete it. And then the next Monday morning I'll get it and I delete it. And I, I do this for three, four months and I'm like, why am I wasting my time looking at it? I never open it. Um, it's probably something that I signed up or got on some type of uh, user list um, and I keep just deleting it. Um, organize them to unsubscribe to those type of uh, emails. Any type of junk emails, you can always block people. So if you get any type of spam or phishing emails, you can always block from a certain sender. Uh, suggest doing that uh, so then those emails just don't show up anymore. If you want to buy something from Dick Sporting Goods, then go to the site and, and do that kind of thing. But um, for, as for an email, or you can set up folders. I organize mine into folders, um, so that kind of saves you time and energy. Uh, but if there's cer certain things that I have to keep, I put them into a folder and and say okay I, I know this is coming up in a month I need to save this email I don't keep it in my inbox I put it into a folder um, and then that way I can access it from there and then also I treat my inbox like a to-do list so today or um, you know I've, I've, I think I have one <laughs> one email in my inbox right now and it's something that I have to do so if I get an email asking me a question or if something I get a, a, a document I need to look at or something like that. I feel that, that I have to do that and, and I just keep that on my to-do list and and I usually try to check them off um, throughout uh, throughout my inbox like that. So um, another uh, secure thing that you should do is make sure that your devices are up to date. Um, you know, a lot of times there are security patches uh, for your computer and your your phone and your devices that you use. Uh, just make sure that they're up to date and and have the best uh, secure software uh, on those devices. So anytime there is an update, um, you know, you can give it a day or two or whatever, but uh, make sure that they're up to date. And a lot of times the your devices will automatically update. You can turn that on by um, just switching uh, within a within the settings there. Uh, but you can add automatic updates. So usually, when your phone is resting at your bedside table or your you know, computer uh, is off for the night, uh, it'll automatically update. Um, so you're you're ready to go in, in the morning. Another one would be delete old apps and accounts. So. We all have uh, tons of accounts <laughs> and, and, and apps, but we sign up these things and we think, oh yeah, this will be great. And a week later, we never use it. And then a week later it becomes into the year. And then the year is, well, it's 10 years ago and I don't even you know remember what that app was or that I even have an account there. Um, so try to think back and, and all the, the apps that you have downloaded or all the accounts that you have open uh, try to close those if you don't use those. Um, if you're a Facebook user and you signed up for Facebook 10 years ago and then you know now I'm not a Facebook user, um, you might want to delete that account uh, simply because then your your account and your name and your password are, are not out there um, easy accessible to anybody um, if it for some reason would would get uh, hacked and that that way, um, you can close out those accounts, and a lot of times those accounts you have the ability to close them out, delete them out, um, download all the data that is um, um, there. So if you had pictures or things that you, but you didn't want to access the site anymore, you would have the ability to do that uh, also. So um, here's a couple. Here's just a a, a nice little um, image to uh, look at your phone or your mobile attacks. Uh, one is Wi-Fi and we kind of already talked about this, but don't join um, unfamiliar Wi-Fi's. You know, turn it off when you're not needing it. Um, you know, a lot of times with uh, unlimited data now, we don't really need uh, uh, Wi-Fi so much, but um, if you do, make sure that you're joining uh, familiar networks. Um, never send information or sensitive information over uh, Wi-Fi. 
and you know that goes for banking account information those kind of things so uh, just remember those those pineapples can be out there uh, any apps so make sure that you're downloading apps from official uh, app store so if you're on um, the App Store or you're on the Google Play Store, make sure it's coming from them instead of the browser. Keep them updated. We just kind of talked about that, but keep them updated. Um, delete the ones that you're not using, especially from the App Store. If they, uh, they delete it from the App Store, um, it's practice to delete it off your phone because if the App Store doesn't support it anymore and it's on your phone, there can be some security issues uh, there too. Uh, some browsers, uh, when you click on the browser within your phone or you tap uh, on the browser within your phone, um, this is the same way for uh, if you access the browser through your computer. Um, just watch out for giveaways, ads, those things that misleading, um, those pay attention to those URLs that uh, and that's kind of hard to see on the phone because it's smaller, but uh, make sure that you're um, accessing uh, the URLs and the websites that you want to access and not something that's uh, maybe fake um, that way. So. Um, Bluetooth, you also have the ability to use Bluetooth on your phone. Make sure that's disabled um, when you are um, not using it. Um, and then not to automatically pair with something. Um, you know, you can, uh, you can automatically have it on. And if you have, just speaking from an iPhone user, if you have uh, AirDrop on and your Bluetooth on um, and you have selected anybody can uh, find me, uh, anybody can send you um, a, a link or a picture or anything like that. Uh, so if it's not needed, uh, just turn it off. Um, smishing is another, uh, it's phishing for uh, SMS, so uh, text messaging. Um, and this is just, an, you, we probably get them around, you know, you've probably got one or two around the election time or, or anywhere. Um, apps like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, those kind of apps that will automatically send some type of message that wants you to click on something or tap on something and then uh, once you do that uh, they're in they're in your email or they're in your um, account uh, using your password those kind of thing and vishing is voice phishing uh, same kind of thing uh, as as text message but they'll call you um, they'll uh, send you a you know we call them robo calls uh, they'll send you a voicemail um, I typically, it's, it, it's, it's weird now because I always used to answer the phone, but if I don't recognize the phone number, I don't answer because if it's, if it's real, if it's a person that needs to get um, 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 to me, uh, they'll leave a voicemail. And a lot of times those, those uh, vishing voicemails, will, you, can, you can tell if it's an automated. And did I really need to talk to that person? Am I, in, is, does my bank need to call me about something or does my you know uh, a person that i've never ever met or never ever uh, opened an account why is this person calling me uh, it's probably gives you a good idea that this is a a, a vishing uh, voice phishing uh, uh, call here and then some social engineering flags i know we talked about these uh, but just to iterate um, make sure that you're from um, you can look when you look at an email and make sure that you can see who it's coming from you know do i usually talk to this person you know do i uh why is hr um emailing me about uh this right now um i usually don't get emails from hr or that that type of thing uh is it inside my organization so it has is it coming from a k-12 user is it coming from a google user is it coming from uh, something that i've never heard of before uh, just make sure that it's not suspicious and 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 looks like uh, something that might come from you know Microsoft or Google. Uh, just just look at where your uh, where your information is coming from. Um, the two is also a good place to look for. So it might have UCC, but it's it's coming from somewhere. It's uh, meant for somebody else, or it's it's to somebody else, but you are CC'd within that email. Uh, you know, this is typically a red flag just to make sure that, well, it really doesn't want my information, but why am I CC'd on this? Um, uh, it's just a, a good a good thought about, well, I probably, this is probably a red flag. And then is there a usual unmix of people? So, yes, I talked to um, 
uh, these four people, but I've never heard of these four people, or I, I'm in a, a group of people that I never converse with, or I've never even met before, uh, that could be a red flag also. Again, we already talked about hyperlinks, but make sure that you kind of look at your hyperlinks, um, hover over them, make sure that they go to the place that you want. And oftentimes uh, within a red flag, it'll give you the hyperlink that'll um, be misspelled or something will be misspelled. Um, so this is Bank of America, but it doesn't say America, it's misspelled. Um, so it looks like it sh should be, you know, with the quick eye and uh, a mouse, quick click of the mouse. Um, you know, you're you're up to a, a phishing email. So uh, look us also at the date. The date will come usually a red flag. Will, if it comes at like a 3 a.m. or a really unusual time. Uh, so y your your manager was working at this time. Probably not. You know, uh, and the subject area is it relevant? Is it something that I'm expecting, or did I request something like this? Um, no, I didn't, so um, I probably shouldn't even reply or uh, contact that person directly. Attachments, again, we already talked about this, but um, was I expecting this? Does it make sense? You know, was did we talk about this? Uh, did did or didn't we? Um, and does it is it a dangerous file? Because it possibly could be. And then you can always um, hover again. You can always hover over it, but. Um, the files that are always safe to click on are a text file or a .txt, um, and that's just simply going to open up a, a a blank document and give you text. Um, so those are those are always safe to click on. And then the content, looking at the content within the email. So you got all this information, but really, is it is it out of the ordinary? Is there bad grammar? Um, you know, is it something that somebody else can gain access to or value from me? Um, usually, you know, you, you're not you're not replying to those people if um, I'm uh, the person that needs to give something out. Uh, does it make you uncomfortable, or does it um, promise to uh, um, you know share a uh, embarrassing photo or something like that of you if you don't you know pay up or using that that same ransomware what we talked about, but. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit uh, about uh, social engineering and how you can kind of combat those. Um, that's uh, uh, my presentation. Um, thanks you for attending this webinar. As always, you're, um, you can contact the help desk at help at k12.nd.us. And uh, thank you and have a good year.